staying with us on Silverbed News 24, Silverbed TV's news hub, then we're still having big discussions. This will take us till the end of the show. Uh, Join the conversation uh, now is um, Achike Chude, Achike Chude with the Joint Action Front, the foremost rights activist. It's a pleasure to have you, Achike Chude, join us. Right. Uh, Charles Nkotari is still with us in Port Harcourt, and he'll be also providing some angles to the conversation we are talking about now. Charles, uh, great to still have you with us. All right. Uh, Achike, big, 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 um, big, um, uh, uh, all right, we have, we have Fred Nwabuwa for, uh, Fred Nwabuwa for is in Abuja, I understand. Uh, great to have you, Fred, join us. Um, it's been a while. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Excellent. So, Achike, uh, you're a great student of history, and interestingly, Achike, you sat down here uh, where we have the countdown to the White House. I remember yeah. that night. Uh, when Joe Biden was um, declared the winner of the election. And we sort of had looked at many angles. I remember the economy, foreign affairs, several areas we had looked at. And, you know, this obviously is the banana peel uh, for him because um, the foreign policy for the United States uh, with Afghanistan is starting from here. So while we look at how this has, we compare and contrast with us as Nigeria because there are a number of similarities playing out here. Uh, first and foremost, the return of the Taliban to power we know about the rise and fall of empires. I've never quite heard the rise and fall and rise as it has happened uh, yeah. with the Taliban here. Yeah, well, it's, um, the, what has happened in Afghanistan has captured the imagination of the whole world uh, for about a week now. Um, not because uh, the United States is pulling out of Afghanistan, uh, if you look at the poll, the survey of Americans before now, they had said the, they said the war had lasted for too long, and the all wars must eventually come to an end. Uh, so it was not about pulling um, um, American troops out of Afghanistan; it was about the way and manner that the troops were pulled out of Afghanistan that has imperiled America today as um, a foremost, foremost, one of the strongest country militarily and economy, economically in the world. A, a decision that has uh, reduced America's standing in international affairs. Um, a decision that also gives American allies the impression that America cannot be trusted um, uh, to, in the long run. Um, of course, we have had uh, Angela Merkel coming out critically to criticize uh, Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had uh, the British Parliament having a special session for that purpose and other European leaders. And some of them were derisively, I think it was Angela Merkel that was saying, well, that they thought America was back. Was back. Uh, because, you know, Trump had this uh, mantra of uh, America first. Mm -hmm. Biden came and said, America, you know, is back and all that. So they can't see any America uh, that is bad, that is back. Only an America that is Qatari now to the Taliban. An America with whose, whose president had said that the Cal Taliban were killers and murderers and whose president, because of what is going on now, now is depending on the same killers and murderers to ensure the safety you know, of America. So these are the contradictions. Uh, the reality is that uh, we have different people have described it in so many ways. Some people, I think General Jackin, you know, former you know, general of the American uh, you know, Armed Forces, says it's, um, it's, uh, it's um, a Dunkirk situation. Dunkirk was where the French and uh, the British pulled out ignominiously during the Second World War. Some have described it as a Saigon issue, you know, 2.0. Biden said we never have a Saigon again. But obviously, the next uh, few days after he made that statement, you have a situation that is worse than Saigon. You know, another infamous period in America's history is uh, the uh, fall of Iran under the Shah that was propped up by the United States and uh, how American, you know, citizens were uh, also captured and the, in the United States lost credibility in the world and then maybe the last, the Bay of Pigs under John F. Kennedy, that was yeah, also a situation. So when you look at what is going on, it's history defining. Uh, there is no way, there is nothing else that Joe Biden is going to do, you know, that will clearly define his administration than what has happened at this okay. you know, particular point in time. Of course, we we'll look at other things. We know, we know, you know they say what goes around comes around. Mm -hmm. America, if you look at it, 
it might not exactly be innocent when it comes to Afghanistan. We know how they propped up uh, um, uh, Osama bin Laden and the Mujahideen uh, in the war against uh, the Soviet Union, uh, giving them guns and all that uh, until the Soviet Union, after nine years of occupation, realized that they were not going to win this war. So they also left. So these are some of the things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, thank you so much for that background to uh, the topic today. Let's come to you now, Fred Iwabusoy, who also is an international affairs analyst. Uh, Give an overview of what you think that America has been able to do. President Joe Biden did say he was going to pull out. It wasn't something they did, you know, very suddenly. Although some people would think they invested so much money over 20 years, resources, human and material resources, maybe should have more tactical in withdrawing the troops. What's your thought with the way that the president had handled, uh, is handling the Afghanistan story? Because we see how some Americans are still there and still there's some evacuations must still take yeah. place. Yeah, thank you very much. I think um, it was done hastily and um, without um, necessary finesse as um, one would have expected America to. But as the first speaker said, it all boils down to one thing, interest. You know, um, when it comes to the global system, national interest comes first. Um, if you look at it, of course, the, Ameri the, the, the people of America, you know, are not um, very above to what has happened. So what is at play is national interest, you know, again, the interest of the Afghans. Let's not forget that the Americans or America did not go to Afghanistan to save Afghanistan, per se. They went there actually to secure their own country, you know, from terrorism. So what is at play are the global system. It's a babel of interest, a clash of interest. So when it comes to relations between among nations, interest comes first. So it is the um, uh, thing we have to look closely that we don't expect America to always um, rise up and come to the aid of any country. America is not the failure of the world. There is no salvation anywhere, like I often say. There is no salvation in the West or in the East. So um, I think uh, it's something that should tell everyone, particularly we Africans, Nigerians, that we don't have to look up to these foreign powers for for support, for, 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 for rescue or for for any um, 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 salvation, whatever. We have to look inwards as a people to solve our problems, homegrown solutions, that's all we need. But again, America's approach to the Afghan matter, it's very, very um, hasty. It paints a very bad picture of America. You see that uh, um, um, hanging on gains and some actually fell down, you know, from the people, you know, and all of that. So the America was more concerned about all citizens in in Afghanistan okay. than the people of Afghanistan. That should tell us that national interest rules uh, the global, global community. There is no such thing as international community per se. It's not. It's abstract. It doesn't exist in the real sense of the word. It's a babel of interests. Different people you know, just like protect people interest. Yeah. That is the interest. I, I don't know. Can we try this again? Oh, all right, Fred, th thank you very much. Uh, Charles, are you still there? All right, uh, we'll, we'll get back to Charles uh, and Kotaria. But, um, all right, uh, Charles and Kotaria, are, are you still there? Can you unmute your device, Charles? All right. If you can hear, if you can hear me, say I hear you. I'm hearing you. <laughs> great. I can hear you. Excellent. I'm sure. I'm sure they can hear in Kabul also too. Uh, but Charles, everyone talks about the lessons uh, from um, the, the Afghan uh, comeback and. Um, they look at the monies that have been spent, they look at the years that have been thrown into the entire crisis. 
uh, resolving the crisis and the legacies that the, the people who provide a sanctuary for terrorists are back. Uh, it's what the headlines will say from a newsman's uh, point of view. But, but what would you say? You look at the Nigerian situation. We've, we've had the military in some states in this country uninterrupted since 2009 till date in the entire northeastern part of the country. In some places, even way um, earlier than that. In Niger Delta, I know that you've had the military there in several communities running to several years. Uh, the cost I cannot imagine, maybe from the security point of view, you can tell us how much it's, it's cost this country to have um, army and um, the, the, the weapons and all of that in, in, uh, all across the entire country. But one lesson I w w want you to help us e expatiate a little on is uh, the military doesn't solve the problem, uh, apparently. Um, this is a clear case people have argued where uh, kinetic hasn't worked. Yeah. That's 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 the right word. You know, we we yesterday, uh, yesterday I was another said I told I told the people that the happenings in Afghanistan is a clear indication that a kinetic approach, military options in solving insecurity cannot work. If you concentrate only on kinetic approach, <clears throat> it's not possible. It's not feasible because looking at uh, the resources that have been. Uh, expended in, in fighting insurgents in Afghanistan, the years, number of years, over 20 years, you know, fighting one uh, insurgents and so on. And suddenly America just pull out without any proper transit uh, plan, you know, and uh, uh, other options, you know, in sustaining or sustaining the, the peace as, uh, that has been witnessed in Afghanistan prior to this time. It's a clear lesson and indication to the Nigerian system. We have to be very cautious on the fight against ins insurgents. A situation where, uh, in a country where insurgents can take no people, numbering over 200 persons, and walk through kilometers through uh, communities, and then keep them custody for months, years, and so on, is a sign of danger you know, and a potential uh, incident like uh, the Afghanistan scenario in our country. Remember, in right inside Abuja, uh, insurgents have bombed United Nations building inside Abuja and several other uh, bombing, including police force headquarters prior to this time. And so the signals, the indices are very clear. So Nigerians need to sit up properly and see how there will be proper non-kinetic approach that will be able to curtail the activities of these insurgents in our land. They have to come up sincerely on the prosecuting the uh, insurgents, come up with a proper terror uh, courts that will be able to prosecute uh, terror offenders and their sponsors. Because the situation where we hear the, the repentance book around has been reintegrated into Nigerian army and the rest, even if at the local level they are integrated as the civilian vigilantes and the rest, poses big danger and great danger to Nigerian states and our common existence. So it is a big lesson, as a matter of fact, to Nigerian situation. You know. I'll back with you as well as Achike Chode and uh, Fred Nwabufo, who is uh, also joining us virtually this morning. We'll take a very short break. When we come back, Nigeria has been expending billions of naira in ensuring that we get military hardware uh, with which we can fight insurgency, hopefully bringing them to, you know, knowledge in the country. Uh, but looking at the Afghanistan story where America had spent a lot of money and, of course, human resources had gone down the drain, as it would seem right now, one would wonder if we are indeed treading the best path. We'll take a look at this after this break.
you can now stream Silverbird News 24 live on mobile app. All you need to do is to download Silverbird News 24 app from Google Play Store on your Android devices and App Store or on your Apple devices. Tap the live button at the bottom bar to watch us live 24-7. You can enjoy all our news programs including PJ News and program. Silverbird News 24. The news never stops. Thanks for staying with us on News Talk. We're still taking a look at the Afghanistan story where the United States has pulled out its street troops and still moving on as we speak. Many criticisms have come, in fact, over the weekend. The former uh, leader of uh, Britain, uh, Tony Blair, who was in power at that point in time, described the action in several words, uh, so to speak. And, and so who would wonder uh, is actually getting acquiring hardware, military hardware, and be ready to fight? the best way to face insurgency in Nigeria, taking our own as a case study at this point in time. We still have with us a uh, gentleman talking with us across Nigeria. Uh, Fred Wabufo, let's talk about this concern of mine, which could be shared by a lot of people watching at this point in time. Nigeria spends a lot of money as we speak. Monies are being voted. In fact, supplementary budget, what you see is money is being deployed towards uh, acquiring uh, uh, military hardware. We still expect to see more of Tukano <laughs> fighter jets coming to the country. America was in Afghanistan, yeah. still in Afghanistan, but it's gone out of Afghanistan, and the war could not be won. What worries you about the Nigerian story? Yeah, um, first of all, I think um, spending on security globally, it's um, quite um, exorbitant. It costs money. You know, if you look at the U.S. budget for security, it's about one of the biggest, you know, so it's normal. But again, I think um, we have to look at the root causes of terrorism, insurgency in Nigeria. You have unemployment, you have poverty, you have mass illiteracy, you have corruption, and all that. So even as we are fighting, you know, deploying force, you know, we also need to look at the root causes. We can not um, extirpate deal with terrorism completely if we do not address these root causes. So we have to also look at the societal, the social political effects, you know, underlying effects, causes of this problem, which I believe the government needs to really look into beyond the point force. But again, I think um, in the case of Nigeria, you don't um, completely deal with a problem like terrorism that is fecundated by an ideology, you know, just by guns, bombs, and all of that. You also have to deploy, of course, what Nigeria is doing, you have to find a way to de-radicalize these people and also address the fundamental causes of the problem. Now, in Afghanistan, the U.S. spent 20 years there but could not address, you know, the fundamental problem of... Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you hear me? Fred, go ahead, please. Can you hear me? Okay, but could not address the problem, you know, because the government of Afghanistan was regarded as a corrupt government. There was a dissonance, a dissonance between the people and the Afghan government. And, of course, you have an ideology that the local population believe in. So how do you deal with a problem like that? That's why the Taliban was able to hold on to influence real support for over 20 years. So you have a, a, a similar situation in Nigeria where you have leaderships not beyond the current government, successive leadership, leadership that have been described as corrupt. And there is a dissonance. You know? So you, you find that agitators, secessionists, and even terrorists would find following, would find followers from the disaffected populations. People who feel that they've not been integrated, well integrated into society. People who feel that there is inequality, there is injustice, 
who feel that they've not been brought into the 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 the, 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 the table to actually right. enjoy the good of the country. Right, right. So you have problems like that. So if right. we do not address social right. inequality, if we right. do not address the problem of right. unemployment, unemployment, if we do not address the problem of poverty, hunger, and all of that, we still have these problems. So these are the underlying causes, factors, you know, uh, engendering the problem of terrorism and insurgency right. globally, basically. Right. So Fred, we have to look before. into this issue. Right. Yeah. right. Excellent. And, and great one. And which is why we have people like Achike Chude who've been in this for uh, many years uh, with, with the joint action from trying to force for the uh, social economic rights. Interestingly, uh, Achike, the French president, they've got 5,000 French troops uh, of the Sahel, and he says they're going to pull in out at the end of uh, this year and early next year. We don't know what that will do to, to the dynamics, but something uh, uh, um, uh, Fred talks about, whether, uh, also I was just trying to recollect too, whether it's a window of opportunity or a smoke screen, when you think about the numbers of people who are beginning to surrender and lay their, their, their weapons, there's the terrorist uh, Iswapo, Boko Haram, the last couple of weeks. But then it occurred to me again that you've been having attacks also in Nigeria and Cameroon on the increase. I'm wondering exactly where that leaves us. But what do you think? Yeah, well, um, I, I hope um, from his last uh, statement, talking about uh, corruption and all that, and said beyond the, this government, I hope excuse was not being provided for this government because the socioeconomic contradictions that have characterized other administrations in this country you know, have also been prevalent in this government and it, in a way have been exacerbated and taken to a crescendo. When you're talking under this administration, when you're talking about corruption, you are talking about misgovernance, when you're talking about uh, inequity, injustice, and all of that. So you realize that the agitations in the country, either for separatism or secession, you know, uh, you know secession, and then the, the, the activities by other non-state non violent actors have increased, and different groups have also come in in the past six years of this administration. While not exonerating other administrations for some of the socio-political contradictions, we can also say that the handling of the Nigerian state at this particular point in time has been less than encouraging, uh, seriously. And that's why you have an increase in some of these you know, acts of instability against the state by some of these armed groups, non-state actors. So that's one. Yes, uh, people are surrendering and all that in droves. And the question you ask yourself is why they are surrendering. Of course, it's a good thing. If they surrender, uh, that means you have less people with arms, less violent people, and you have hopefully safer uh, you know, parts of this country, especially where they are most present in. But the question is, are they surrendering because they have been defeated at the battlefield? You understand that, that yeah. non-repentant. I don't know what it yes. means. Of, of course, uh, repentant we, 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 repentant. Yeah, we forget that. <laughs> Born you know? again terrorist. Yeah. Huh? So, so are they surrendering because they have suddenly seen the light, and they have a priest of conscience, as the French would say, mm. and realize that look, what they have been engaged in all this while has been has not been good, uh, you know? Or is it that they are surrendering because they have been beaten decisively at the battlefield? That does not seem to be the case. We have not, you know, had major successes, you know, in terms of our military expedition against these people. So these are questions you ask. And, and then again, because Nigerians have gotten used to uh, this, um, you know, uh, Nigerians are almost permanently in a state of cynicism, that whenever government does something, it might be good at the surface, but Nigerians will look at it and say, look, there are some other things you know, happening. And that is because there's a trust issue between the mm -hmm. governed and those who govern. Mm -hmm. We discussed this the day we, I think we were trying to talk about um, uh, you know, productivity in the country mm -hmm. and, and standardization of goods and services and all that. And then it is also the same scenario of lack of trust by the people for those who govern them. And that is important if you want to build a broad-based consensus mm. and to move towards actualizing a national objective. People must, must buy into it. People must believe in it. But unfortunately, we don't see this uh, you know, also uh, happening. So these are some of the issues. But I will also say something, talking about whether kinetic or non-kinetic kinetic intervention. Mm. Virtually in all of the wars that are being fought in the world today, especially uh, these wars, these battles that are, these conflicts that are long drawn out, there's always a realization by the politicians or by those in power that these things cannot be 
you know, tackled successfully and effectively through, a, you know, a, a military solution. It doesn't prevail. That was why in the U.S. invasion of Iraq, there was this motto of, you know, trying to get at the hearts and minds of the average Iraqis. What does that mean? Some form of civilian administration, some form of political engineering to get the people of Iraq to also participate in the process. In the 20 years that the United States has been in Afghanistan, that has happened. They have held elections. I think the first president of Afghanistan was Ahmed Kazai. After that, we've had subsequent elections. Mm. And that was because of that recognition that we need to carry the people along. But obviously, it has not worked. Obviously, there are so many reasons. That's a discussion mm. you know, for another day. So in Nigeria, in West Africa, you know, like you talked about, I, I would agree with the submission that you need to look at the socioeconomic contradictions in the, in the continent. Mm. But we must also accept this truism. And that has become you know, a consensus among so many people, whether Africans or non-Africans, technocrats or not, that Africa can never be liberated. Africa can never be saved unless Africans liberate themselves, unless Africans save themselves. So we must begin to look inwards uh, you know, and, and look for ways to begin to resolve you know, our problems and not wait for those people outside. Yes, they would always help because the world is a global village. Mm. So no man is an island. You always need help from one country or the other. Nigeria has always, in time, helped other countries. Mm. South Africa, the apartheid wars, Namibia, Zimbabwe, and all of that. This is the role we have always played. And so countries will continue to play this role. But I think the critical thing is, for those people who are in the eye of the storm, uh, you know, the political leadership, for instance, in Africa and Nigeria, how sincere and how committed are they to the Nigerian, you know, a, a, a pr project? And if, if, if we had, unfortunately, even with the present, with those in the past and the present administration especially, mm. I cannot exactly tell you that, look, what is happening today, the, the fight against insurgency, the issues of injustice and inequity in Nigeria that is being looked at from a way, in a way, and from a perspective that bodes well for all the constituent units that make up this country. So the crisis that we are seeing basically is a crisis of injustice against Nigerian people and then the deep economic, socioeconomic, you know, political malaise that we have have also oh. contributed to the problems that we're having in Nigeria. Oh, I think so much, Ikechide. We have to call stop now. Let's stay within our charts and Kotaria. Afghanistan has about 39 million people as population. Nigeria has over 200 million. When I saw the videos of Afghans trying to flee the country when Taliban, you know, came calling, I wondered how, where 200 million people would run to, God forbid. In the quest to ensuring that we do not get to the Afghanistan's, uh, you know, the situation in the country, what are those things that we governments and the people generally should be doing uh, as we coast home? Yeah, uh, like uh, first we keep ringing bell, government should open up in the security management of the country and involve the people in that, that management structure, you know, to be able to uh, play a collaboratory role and have synergy with the security outfits across the country. And secondly, government should be able to be well, seriously in the uh, fight against insurgents by looking at the terrorist act and uh, create possibly a terrorist court that will have accelerated hearing to punish terror offenders, you know, and uh, to serve as deterrence to uh, potential terrorists and uh, their sponsors. Government should be able to come up with more functional institutions that will be able to alleviate the sufferings of the people and relax the ash economy within the area. By that, we there are a lot of beautiful policies by government that are people-oriented. Unfortunately, the implementation has always been a major problem. So government should come up with more functional, people-oriented uh, policies and implementation plan, especially the social interventions and so on that will be able to bring quick impacts in the sufferings of the people. So uh, generally, the, the, the security structure needs to accommodate the people. An institutionalized platform, when we say people integration, they must come up with an institutionalized platform that can checkmate activities and also facilitate synergy 
between the security state players and right. the communities. Right. We're going to have to leave the, it at uh, that. Uh, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And it's been a, a great pleasure speaking with you, Charles and Kotaria, security expert. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right, and then we segue to Fred um, Wabu for, uh, for his closing remarks, um, some international affairs analysts. Uh, Fred, in closing, it was the, um, I remember it was uh, Vito Colione in uh, Mario Puzo's Godfather who said, keep your friends close and keep your enemies closer. Do you think that the Nigerian government at any point in time down the road will recognize the Afghanistan government, uh, Taliban-led government? <laughs> Well, for me, I think uh, it's too um, um, early to call, but um, I believe the government will do what's in the best interest of Nigeria. Let me close by saying that um, what played out in Afghanistan and what has played out over the years in Rwanda, during the killings in Rwanda, the war had to wait for 100 days, after 100 days to actually take action. And other subsequent events like that shows that as Nigerians, we have to defend our interests. We have to fight for our country. We have to rise up and hold our co country there and see how we can salvage it ourselves. There's no salvation anywhere in the West or in the North. Nobody will save us. We have to save ourselves. It's all in our hands. We can make Nigeria better. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Fred Mwabo. I uh, do have a great week. And um, over to Achike Chude. <laughs> well, I think if there's a lesson we have learned, and that is the fact that um, an inept you know, political administration and uh, a passive and uh, careless people is a very big uh, combustion for social instability in a country. So it's easy to hold the political leadership and accuse them of uh, responsibility for a lot of things that are going wrong. The people themselves also have allowed it. Uh, you know, so we find ourselves between the devil and deep blue sea. We're in a quagmire. How do we get out of it? With the poverty in the land, with the illiteracy in the land, and this sense of helplessness by the ordinary Nigerians. And the fact that even from every election that you have that should give hope about new leadership, a new dawn in the country, you have less and less people being involved in the electoral process. It's, it is a signpost of the fact that uh, we still have a very, very long way to go. You know, so. I, I, I don't have a magic wand. I cannot tell you exactly what will happen. But we also hope that this is a lesson for the citizens of this country, you know, that we cannot, you know, call for help from people who have a different national security imperative or strategy, you know, or interest. Uh, so it's always about their interest first and foremost. So we must have our own Nigerian interest. What are those interests? Those are the things that we need to hold on to. We must begin to put bigger pressure on the leadership. But lastly, for the political leadership in this country, just to tell them that if this country goes down and they think that they will get away with it, they are only living in a fool's paradise. It's going to consume everybody. So we must work hard mm. to make sure that we rescue our country from the malaise, socioeconomic, yeah. political, that we find ourselves in. It is doable. We can actually build a new country. But we must have that mindset and approach it with a sense of optimism and patriotism oh, and seriousness. And, you know, we can get Nigeria to work better. Thank you so much, Achikechu, the public affairs analyst. We also want to thank all of our resource persons today, uh, Charles Nkotaria Jr., Nkotaria, uh, as well as uh, Fred Wabu for, uh, for joining us on the program today. We well, thank you so much also for watching. Uh, I'll say that if it took within days for uh, uh, Afghanistan forces to fall to the Taliban, after 20 years of American op in occupation and equipping the country with all that they said that they, they had, and the crash, then people who are looking forward to America coming to save Nigeria and other person may just be living in a fool's paradise. Mm -hmm. We've got to do us at this point in time, and it begins with you and myself. So have a very beautiful day. We'll be back again tomorrow morning on another edition of News Hub. I am Shun Oyedij. Good morning. And I am our Obo. You should say, we're shush this week. Asante sana. Well, that will end in Sunday, if you like. It will, it will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy.